Technology tonight that is nothing short of life-changing for a man who lost his left arm in a workplace accident. In a world first, Australian researchers have fitted an amputee in Sweden with a bionic hand, allowing him to control each finger with his mind. It's the only time a prosthetic like this has been possible for someone with an above-the-elbow amputation. Joining me now is Professor Max Ortiz Catalan, who led the research at the Bionics Institute in Melbourne. Thank you for joining us. Why is this bionic hand so groundbreaking? Thank you for having me. The um, main difference with this work is that we approach the problem from two, two sides, the surgical and the engineering. So a, a prosthesis is a machine that needs to be connected to a person. So we have a human machine um, connection. And for many decades, all the work has been on the prosthetic side, on having the, the motors and the batteries and that working um, like a human hand. But the connection with the human so that the person can control it uh, has been the most difficult part. So we rearrange the um, um, muscles and nerves in the residual limb of this patient so we can extract more information so we can basically connect uh, the prosthesis in a way that is um, allowing him to to have more functionality so we we combine surgical uh, advancements and engineering technologies it's just incre incredible the pictures that we're looking at so this man who received this bionic hand will be able to perform everyday tasks like we've seen using a screwdriver it must be life-changing for him he is uh, doing that already actually so one of the um, difference with our work is that the patients are using it in their everyday life it's not only a demonstration for the laboratory um, and this is possible because we have this technology, this implant interface that allows them to, to have this connection with the nervous system. You can think about it as a USB a port to the human body. So when the patient connects the prosthesis, he's making a connection with the, with the skeleton mechanically, but also electrically to his nervous system. So when he tries to move the hand, those signals get to the prosthesis. They are um, um, looking um, by an artificial intelligence algorithms that uh, decodes what the patient is trying to do and then tells the prosthesis what what to do so, so it's a combination between between hardware and, and software that integrates with the human why is it so much more comfortable than a traditional limb attachment also a prosthetic limb is heavy and your own limbs are heavy and when you want to attach that to the human body you normally will do that with a with a socket it's called you so it's a uh, it goes around the soft tissues and compresses the the residual limb to maintain the prosthesis in place. And this can be very uncomfortable if you're moving around and so on. You can think about it as having a pair of very tight shoes that you have to use for the rest of your life. Um, so people don't enjoy using it um, all the time. And when you're doing physical activities, it can be um, uncomfortable. And also with the changes in weather, for instance, if it gets very, very warm, then you start sweating and, and that creates some other problems. Here, you don't have anything around the soft tissue. It's a connection to the skeleton. Um, and the reason why we have a skeleton is that, so it provides the mechanical stability for the whole body to be able to move around. And, and that is the difference. By having this implant inside the bone, we create an extension of the skeleton where we can connect the artificial limb directly. You've also used machine learning in this. How did that help? So the signals travel in the nervous system by, by electrical impulses, right? So, so that doesn't tell anything to the prosthesis. So we, we look at the patterns of electrical activity and we train an algorithm to identify that um, X pattern means opening the hand, Y pattern means closing the hand and moving every finger and so on. So after we train an algorithm to recognize the patterns of electrical activity in the, in the reconstructed um, musculature that we that we did in this patient then the the next time the patient tries to do that movement the algorithm knows what he's intending to do and then moves that finger um with the with a given um, movement incredible stuff thank you so much for joining us and explaining the remarkable work professor catalan welcome thank you